Before we get into this episode, I want to invite you to join a community of faith-based storytellers. Yes, Faith Audio Network. Now, Faith Audio Network is our online community designed to sharpen and encourage faith-based storytellers to use their voice uh, and overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So if you know that God is calling you to speak up, if you know that in this season, God is telling you to use your voice, whether that be on stages or launching a podcast or being a guest on podcast or even doing an audio book or some type of audio experience, then I want to invite you to join this community. Faith Audio Network is now open for all faith-based storytellers to join. So if you know that you have a story to tell and you are ready to sharpen your faith with other other Christians who are also speaking about the Lord boldly and confidently, this is your opportunity. To learn more, please visit faithaudionetwork.com. That's faithaudionetwork.com. I'll see you on the other side. Hello, my love, and welcome to another episode of the Faith-Based Storyteller Show, where we sharpen and encourage one another in Christ. I'm your host, Michaela Robertson, and thank you so much for joining me for another day, another week, and another opportunity for us to walk in the Lord's will for our lives. Now, I'm so excited to share this episode with you. I'm going to be honest, I've probably recorded this like four to five times already, (laughs) and I feel like the Lord wanted it to be right now. Because when I initially went to record this episode, it was on my way home from a trip. I was in an airport. It was a beautiful airport. There was a layover. And at the time, I had just received the word from the Lord that he said, you will be heard, not seen. And I took that as Do not focus on what you look like, but focus on speaking my word. And so what I did is I set up my camera in this airport. I set up my uh, computer. I had the whole setting. I took B-roll, which is like background shots. And I thought it was going to be the perfect video to put out. And you know what happened? The video was great, but the audio was crap. And so the Lord told me, again, I tell you, you will be heard, not seen. And so today I want to bring you a word that I was that I received while in the airport, while I was waiting for a layover. And I mentioned to you guys in the last episode that my friend Latoya Matthews uh, released her book launch for her book Unveiled Freedom. And so I went to Atlanta to support her. And on my trip home, I had an overnight layover, meaning that I would be spending the night in an airport. And for me, that was the Vegas airport. And as I was sitting there waiting for my second flight to arrive, this is about one o'clock in the morning. So it was like a six or seven hour layover. So basically the plane drops you off in Vegas and then you get there at midnight and then your next flight leaves at like 7 a.m. So I had a good seven hours in this airport and I was asking the Lord, should I sleep? Uh, Should I go find something to eat? Or, you know, is there something that you want to say to me? And the Lord said, I have a word for you. Grab your notebook and start writing. And so today's message is, are you gambling with God? Are you gambling with God? Now, I know, of course, being in Vegas, you think what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? (laughs) But I want to really question you and I really want you to dive into the the question, are you gambling with God? And we're going to break down what it means to gamble with God. And so the first thing that I did is I went to uh, Google and I Googled what it actually means to gamble And there are three definitions that I was able to pull that we are going to line up with the word of God today to see if we are gambling with God. And so the first definition of gamble is to play a game for money or property. And so my question to you is, are you playing a game with God for money or property? Because when it comes to gambling and playing games, I found it really interesting how the definition of a game is a form of player sport typically competitive, played according to rules, and decided by skill, strength, or luck. And to play, the actual definition of play, is to engage in an activity for enjoyment or recreation rather than a serious or practical purpose. And so when I first accepted Christ, I don't know about you guys, but when I first accepted Christ, I was determined to be saved, Right. Because, you know, once you allow the Lord into your life, then you live this holy and righteous life. And I was determined to be saved, quote unquote. And so saved to me looked like saved activities. 
So being in church, singing in the choir, going on mission trips, attending Christian conferences, the works. And it was so interesting because I realized older in my life that these things, these saved activities became more of a routine. And it wasn't, I wasn't really taking Christ seriously. I thought that if I was in church and if I was singing in the choir, then I was saved and I was good enough. Or if I went on these Christian mission trips or if I went to these conferences, then it was it was enough to just go on these things and not necessarily spend time with God because I was spending time with God on these trips or in these activities. And so these things, again, became such routine that I didn't take God seriously and I wasn't reading the word. I wasn't seeking the Lord for deeper understanding. I wasn't praying. I wasn't spending time with God outside of these activities. And I wasn't truly building a relationship with Christ or taking the time to understand his purpose or the purpose that he gave me to be here on earth. And so I was playing the Christian, but I wasn't actually following Christ. And so when I think about that first definition of gamble, which says to play a game for money or property. And we know that the actual definition of a game is something that is played according to rules, decided by skill, strength, or luck. And play means to engage in activity for enjoyment and recreation rather than for serious purpose. I clearly was playing because I enjoyed the recreation of being a Christian. I enjoyed the activity and engagement of being a Christian, but I did not take it seriously. And I did not take the word practically and actually apply it to my life. And on top of that, the, the, the game that I was playing was determined by my skill, my strength, or my luck. And so when it comes to the Lord, he is not like, when you come to Christ, you are not, how do I, how do I say this? When you, when you first come to Christ, it does not matter how much effort or how much work you do with your hands The Lord wants to know you. There is a scripture in the Bible that says, uh, but Lord, we prayed and we fasted. Um, But the Lord said, but I did not know you. And so it's so important for us to know the Lord, to have a relationship with the Lord, to spend time with the Lord, to love the Lord with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind, to trust in him with our complete being. Because if not, then we are playing a game. And I feel like many of us are playing a game for money, or for property because we're seeking these blessings from the Lord. And we believe that if we live a certain lifestyle, we will receive these blessings, right? So I played the Christian and I thought that by playing the Christian, I would receive a house or I would receive money. But the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, one, if you fully obey the Lord, your God and carefully follow his commands, the Lord, your God will set you high above the nations on earth meaning that it is our obedience that brings blessings. It is our faith in God that allows us to fully obey him. And then when you look at Hebrews 13, five, it says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God had said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And I feel like when we are gambling, there is an And a strong, I'm not going to say addiction because some people gamble and they are not addicted. There is a strong draw to the love of money where the Lord said, keep your lives free from the love of money, but be content with what you have. And so God has given us more than anything or more than what we could ever imagine, more than what we have. And he said he's always going to provide our needs. And so when we look at Philippians 419, it says God will meet all of our needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And so it is his glory that brings these blessings, his glory that brings the money or the property, not our ability to play the Christian or to gamble with God or to even do these saved activities and think that it's enough for us to truly have a relationship with Christ. And so what I love about that first definition when it comes to play is that when it comes to God, there is no competition. It's not according to the rules of this world, but according to our relationship with the Lord. And it's not decided by our skill. It's not decided by our own strength. It's not decided by our luck, but it's decided by God alone. And so it's very important for us to do as Matthew 6, 25 says, and seek first the kingdom of righteousness and all the things that we desire, that money, that property will be added unto us. And so that is the first definition. Are you gambling with God by playing a game 
for money or property. So the second definition of gamble is to bet on an uncertain outcome. To bet on an uncertain outcome. Now, when I looked up the word bet, literally the word gamble came up. So gamble is another word for bet. But another definition for the word bet is to be certain or to feel sure. So when I ask you, are you betting on uncertain outcomes? I'm asking you that because I want to know if you're betting on uncertainty instead of placing your faith in God. Now, Hebrews 11, one says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance or certainty about what we do not see. I don't want us to confuse faith with betting on uncertain outcomes because it's very easy to to cloud the two faith and betting on uncertainty because when we gamble or we feel certain or sure about an uncertain outcome that's gambling what we do is we place our hope in the uncertainty so we place our hope in what we do not know but faith comes by hearing and hearing comes through the word of God which is Romans 10 17 and so our faith is not placing our hope in uncertainty it's placing our complete trust our complete confidence and our complete belief in God through hearing his word so when I give you these scriptures when you open up your bible and do bible study you hear the word of God you are reading the word of God you hear the word of God and you are able to internalize the word of God which then strengthens your faith now when you place your faith in this word and you know that this word is true and you know that this word is fact and that Jesus is the way the truth and the life then we know that by placing our faith in the word of God in God alone we are not putting our hope in something that we are not sure of or that we should feel sure of so for example let's say you're playing the lottery or you're doing a scratch off and you take this scratch off and you're like I feel so certain that I am going to win this money And I am allowing the Lord to place his hand and bless this ticket. But I already know whether he does it or not. I am going to win this money because I feel so sure about it. That is gambling with God. Now, when it comes to faith, you are saying that, yes, I'm going to play this lottery, but I'm playing this lottery just as a game. That's it. It has nothing to do with my relationship with God. What I'm going to do personally is that I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to place all of my hope and all of my confidence in the Lord, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know that according to his word, he's his promises are going to come to pass in my life. It has nothing to do with me playing this game, has nothing to do with anything that I do by my own hands. It all has to do with my obedience and my faith in the Lord. That is the difference between faith and gambling, right? When we gamble, we are placing our hope and our faith in uncertain outcomes. But when we have faith, we have a certainty that God is going to do what God is going to do. Remember, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance or certainty about what we do not see. We do not have to see something to be certain that because it is aligned with the word of God, because it is in the word of God, it is going to come to pass. And so when we look at Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And if our father is the rewarder and our faith is how we are rewarded, why would we ever need to lean on an uncertain outcome? Hey there, Storyteller. I just want to interrupt this episode really quick to let you know that Faith Audio Network is now open. Faith Audio Network is our community for storytellers like you, storytellers who listen to podcasts like this, storytellers who know they have a voice and they know that God has given them a powerful gift to be able to go out and speak for him, to give him glory. So if you know that you are interested in joining a community that is going to hold you accountable, that is going to pray with you, that is going to intercede on your behalf and that's going to sharpen your faith, this is the community for you. To learn more and to register, please visit faithaudionetwork.com. That's faithaudionetwork.com. Now, the third definition of gamble is to bet something on the chance of gain. Now, of course, this goes in alignment with our first definition, which is to play a game for money or for property. It definitely is in alignment with the second definition, which is to bet on an uncertain outcome. But the third one, again, is to bet something 
on the chance of gain. Now, when you look up the word gain, gain means to obtain or secure an increase in wealth or resources. To obtain or secure an increase in wealth or resources. Now, I understand that in this life, it requires us to have some sort of currency. It requires money in order for us to pay bills. It requires money in order for us to live. And it requires us to exchange this currency in order to live a comfortable life. But what we need to understand is that faith is currency. Faith is currency and God knows exactly what we need. I mentioned Philippians 419 earlier, but I'll say it again. He says that he will meet all of our needs according to the riches of his glory, according to the riches of his glory. So when we are betting something on the chance of gain, we are not giving our our money to God and saying, hey, I worked 40 hours a week, so please make sure that you bless me because I put in this work. No, what we are doing is we are saying, hey, I'm placing my faith in you. Please use my faith as a currency in the kingdom of God. Please allow my faith to build what it is that you need me to build, to build the house of the Lord, to build the temple of the Lord, so that not just I, but my generations after me and the generations after them and every generation to come is a recipient of God's promises and God's blessings based on my faith. And I know for me, I can't speak for anybody else, that sometimes it's really hard for us to have faith when our outside circumstances don't necessarily line up with what we are believing for. It's hard. You know, we think we do have to bet something. We think we do have to secure an increase in wealth by an exchange for something. We feel like we have to give something in order to receive something from God. But the thing is that God's love is given freely It's given freely. His love was given to us. So like when we look at John 3, it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son and who shall ever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so God gave us his son, Jesus Christ. He gave us his our Lord and Savior. He he gave it to us freely. And so it was through his life and through his sacrifice and through his resurrection that we are able to have relationship with our heavenly father. And I know that for some of us, that can be really hard to comprehend because why would an omnipotent, all knowing, all powerful God love us so much to give us his son? Why would he do that? I didn't do anything to deserve that kind of sacrifice. I did not do anything to deserve that kind of love. I was born into sin. And the thing is, Jesus Christ allowed all of our sins and transgressions to be erased on the cross. It is through his blood. And so whom the son sets free is free indeed. And so we were given freedom through Jesus. And God loved us so much that we did not have to bet something to gain this love. All we had to do is be obedient and love his son just as much as God loves us because of love of Christ is given freely. And so what good is it for us to gain the whole world yet forfeit our soul? Remember, gain means to to obtain or secure an increase in wealth or resources. So what good is it for us to obtain and secure increase in wealth and resources to gain all these things from the world, yet forfeit our soul. That's Matthew 16, 26. And so what can, or honestly, if you look at the verse, the rest of Matthew 16, 26, it says, or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? There is nothing that we can give in exchange for our soul. And because God gave us his son, our souls now have the opportunity to dwell in eternal heaven and 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 to dwell for eternity in heaven with our lord and savior jesus christ and so why would we ever bet on the chance of gain at the expense of losing our soul because when we look at the bible the lord is our shepherd we lack nothing he is our shepherd he is going to lead us 
besides the waters. He is going to be our guide. He is going to call us by name. He knows who we are. He knows us when we were formed in our mother's womb. So before we even took our first breath, when we were conceived, he knew exactly who we were and what we would need and why we would need it. And so we don't have to bet on any uncertainty. We don't have to bet on the chance to gain something. Our father already knew what we have. And when we think about like a parent, right, when you bring a child into this world, many parents have the baby carriage ready. They have the nursery room set up. They have a closet full of clothes ready. They have formula on hand. They have the bottles ready. And this is before the child even comes out. The child is in the womb and the parents already have everything prepared. And so that is how it was before we came into this world. Our father, our heavenly father already had everything prepared. And so there's no need for us to gamble our lives for worldly gain because we already have what we need. And so to back up this definition, right, why would we take a chance on securing wealth and resources based on our own understanding, our own strength, instead of believing in the name of our heavenly father, Jehovah Jireh? Right. That is one of God's names, Jehovah Jireh, which means God, our provider. And so knowing that God is our provider, provider, we need to allow him to show up and allow him to do what he wants in our lives in order for us to not secure wealth, but to receive his glory and his wealth and his promises that he has placed in his word in order for us to gain eternal life. Now, Jesus says in Matthew 16, 25, just a couple of verses up, whoever wants to secure their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for him will find it. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather find my life in Christ than lose my soul to gain the world. So I go back to my initial question. Are you gambling with God? Are you gambling with God? Are you playing a game for money or property with God? Are you betting on an uncertain outcome instead of placing your faith in God? And are you betting something on the chance for gain at the expense of losing your soul? Are you gambling with God? Because if you find yourself in any of these situations, the beauty of it is that you are still here today, that you are listening to this episode, which means that you have time. God has given us time to repent. He has given us time to change our ways. This earth is a training ground for what is to come. And so if we can learn how to be submissive, if we can learn how to be obedient, if we can learn how to practically walk out the word of God in our lives here on earth, then God's will in heaven is going to be done again here on earth. He's going to prepare us for his righteousness, but we can also experience heaven on earth while we're here. But when we go to see our king, when our life is said and done and we have run our race and we have finished the faith and we are in the presence of the Lord, we would have known that we spent our lives preparing to worship him. And so we have time. And so if you resonated with any of three, any of these three definitions and it was a yes, and you know that you are gambling with God, this is a great time to repent. Repentance is not just an apology like, God, I'm sorry, but it's asking God for forgiveness. It's acknowledging our wrongs and it's taking God seriously by practicing his word and not retrieving to old habits or routines. I am tired of those who go to the church every single Sunday and they are repenting at the altar. If you repent it, you should not be doing the exact same thing that you did. Now, this is not to say that you are not perfect. None of us are perfect. Only Christ is perfect. But the Bible says, be ye perfect as I am perfect. And so it is our goal to strive to be like Christ, to emulate Christ. And that means we have to intentionally and practically walk out the word of God in our lives so that we can be closer to perfection like our father's son, Jesus Christ. But this is a great opportunity for us to repent. And all it takes is saying, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I ask that you come into my heart and teach me how to live your ways by faith and in righteousness. And Lord, I ask that anything that I may have done wrong, that you forgive me for my sins. And Lord, I ask that every day that You give me the courage and the confidence to steward the time, the gifts, the resources, and the relationships that you have blessed me with. 
because I do not want to gamble with you, but I want to walk with you in life. And so whatever happens in Vegas may stay in Vegas, y'all. But what happens on earth will be accounted for in heaven. Again, what happens on earth will be accounted for in heaven. And so if we have breath in our body, let us take this chance to repent from our, our wrongdoings, to correct our wrongs, and to place all of our faith and all of our hope and all of our strength and all of our confidence in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I ask you this question again. Are you gambling with God? This is the message that I received during my layover. And I am so grateful for this message because it opened my eyes to some instances in my life where I was gambling with God. And it also opened my eyes to some beliefs that I may have had currently where I was gambling with God. Maybe I didn't exercise it fully walking it out, but it was a a limiting belief in my mind that where I thought I had to do something in order to receive or that I had to place my faith or my hope in uncertainty in order than instead of placing my faith in Jehovah Jireh, the God, my provider. And so I'm so grateful to bring you this word today. I hope that it was a blessing to you as it was a blessing to me. But just remember, again, what happens in Vegas may stay in Vegas, but what happens on earth will be accounted for in heaven. And so let us take this time to make sure that we are living righteously so that when we are judged and account and take account for our our actions, that we will be seen as righteous and that we will hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servants. All right, loves, that concludes today's episode of the Faith-Based Storyteller Show. If you uh, love this episode or if it resonated with you, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, And until next time, always remember that God loves you and so do I. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye. (laughs) 